on hey 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 DevSecon is here and I'm unmuted and we're ready to jump to our awesome awesome ignites that we will start with Danny Robinson from AppFlyer. Hi everyone. Uh, amazing to be here. So my name is Danny Robinson. I'm the lead security engineer at AppsFlyer, and today we're having a bit of fun looking at load balancers. So if there's one thing I would like you to take away from this talk is that running security tests through a load balancer is a risk in itself that needs to be managed. This is a presentation about a traversal vulnerability I found, and also the research that followed with a friend of mine, Rotten Bal. We're going to cover a bit about AppsFlyer, a technical POC for traversal attacks in Nginx and AWS ALB. We'll look at the root cause, and we'll also look at some recommendations to take home and think about. So let's dive in. AppsFlyer is a rapidly growing startup with large in-house development teams. We have lots of different technologies and services, and my job is to secure them all. Let's get straight to the POC. Here we have a very simple web application service that sends the contents of a file back in the HTTP response. The developer that wrote this only wanted to send back files that were within the secure folder. The server accepts a GET request. The user supplied URL is concatenated with the secure string, and that file is then sent back to the user. As an example, sending a request for 1.txt will cause the server to send back the file from secure 1.txt, which holds in it, hello world. Note that the developer thinks it's not possible for the user to get the contents of the index.js file because it's not in the secure folder. In order to demonstrate this, we send the get request directly to the server. And in the response, we get the content of the file 1.txt, which is hello world. In order to exploit the traversal vulnerability in this app, we can request a file from a directory one level up by using the dot dot slash notation. Here we request the index.js file directly from the server. And now we have bypassed the protection the developer thought that they put in place. Now, this isn't big news. It's a very simple traversal attack. Our story with load balancers begins from here. Carrying out the exact same traversal attack, we now go through the ALB. This time, we receive a 400 bad request error. After playing with the request to see how we could bypass this 400 bad request error, I found that we can get our malicious request through the ALB by using multiple slashes. Using multiple slashes at the beginning of the request then bypasses the 400 error, and we get the index.js file in the response. In order to demonstrate this point further, this shows an attempt at retrieving the etc password file through the AWS ALB once again. This time, we've added three slashes at the beginning of the request. However, once again, we get 400 bad requests. As before, we're able to reach the vulnerable application by appending more slashes at the beginning of the request. The number of slashes you need at the beginning of the request is relative to the number of directories you want to traverse. The previous POC led to us asking, what is going on in the AWS ALB load balancer? So let's have a look. When the requests were blocked, we saw a certain pattern. The 400 bad request response from the ALB had a distinctive HTML signature. After a simple Google search and digging in GitHub, we found the signature in Nginx. Digging into the configuration options for Nginx for things related to slashes, we found merge slashes. The merge slashes configuration option allows compression of two or more adjacent slashes in a URI into a single slash. When merge slashes is on, which is the default, the POC shown before of using multiple slashes does not work. When it's off, it does work. Mm. So we wanted to run the same test to see what behavior we see with Nginx. Running with Nginx with merge slashes off, we can see the exact same behavior as with the ALB. We get a 400 bad request. However, adding more slashes at the beginning once again gives us a 200 response, and we can read the etc password file. In order to understand why this behavior happens, we looked at the HTTP URI parsing code with Nginx. Specifically, our focus was on the Nginx HTTP pass complex URI function. The code here essentially is counting the number of forward slashes versus dot dot slash notation. If there aren't enough forward slashes, 
it sends a 400 bad request error. To test out this function and show that this is responsible for the behavior we see, we created a simple test program. Here we can see when we run the test with a regular traversal attack, we get an error and return code 11. Here, we can see that when we run the test with extra slashes at the beginning, we return zero, meaning the function passed the URL passing function with no issues. So now we understand the ALB and Nginx behavior better, let's talk briefly about what we should do about it. We spoke to both the AWS load balancer team and Nginx team to discuss this behavior. However, it will not be changing as there are users of both who need this functionality for routing purposes. This is not a vulnerability within Nginx nor AWS ALB. Neither of them are protection solutions. If you are looking for a protection solution, use a WAF. My recommendation for your own security tests are, if possible, run your tests directly to the application that you're testing. And if you must use an ALB or Nginx with merge slashes off, either run traversal attack payloads with multiple slashes at the beginning of the request, or manually review 400 bad request errors from traversal attack payloads. Thanks for listening. And that summarizes my security chaos with load balances. Thank you very much, Danny. It's nothing more refreshing on the afternoon than a bit of C++ code.